Greetings everyone, and great here with another Age of is 4 or 3 replay. So on the bottom right side as the blue Aztecs, we have Davidin spawn north side as the red Ottomans, we have Pluck Luck. Gotta make it sound more menacingly. We do have, of course, the natives, the Sudanese, we can give you access to the Sudanese Dervish, the Askari, and the Sanal Horsemen. And of course, my favorite natives, the Berbers, which give you access to the Burma Camera Rider, the Burma Nomad, and the best native in the unit in the game, the Salty Camel. We do now have the Colonial Gunslinger Claim. Does do 25 damage at 15 range. Pretty good one. The Gunslinger. Okay, it looks like both Gunslingers. It is still my opinion that as Aztec, you should kill all the natives and not cover any of them. I put more weight in the double experience. So, more or less, he did forfeit 30 experience to get 90 food. Which, that's actually quite a bit of food there. I suppose that was one of the stronger defense ones, so that was a high quality treasure. Most times the treasures are a little bit more weaker, like this one here, 35 wood. Would you rather have... Because you can't convert hyenas, but... 18 experience or 35 wood. Or yeah. Or you get 35 wood and 18 experience. He did go ahead and snipe that colonial gunslinger, so he gave his Almost. opponent that experience. We got the Explorer Prophet, Recap, Aipib, Aip, Ingarun, I think, versus. Uh, Dava Dayan. Or Dav... Davad Din. Dava Din. I think that's how you pronounce it. Of course, it is his own name. So it is himself. Smashing the autumn in the face. Like any Aztec would. Also while on fire. Looks like the Eagle Scout did take some rounds there. Has 16 health remaining. Five health remaining. If you guys have vision range, you can try camouflaging. And take out this uh, explorer here. We'll of course give him ninety experience. Either way, do we see any decks selected? We do have deck here, the beginner deck. We got the villagers, high priest of Xilton. The uh, Mine Calendar, or Calendar Ceremony, I call it the Mine Calendar. I do really like this card. It's really nice. Wood, Infinite Coin, Warrior Priest, Coyote Runners, Puma Spearmen, Slingers, War Trading Hut Travises, War Hut Travises, Villagers, Infinite Coin, Covered Wagon, Smoking Mirror, a Slingers, Prowlers, Skull Knights, Noble Hut Travises, Citadel, Slingers, Sling, uh, Night Combat, Warrior Culture, Royal Skulls, and the Skull Knight Temple. So it's not really any focus sort of deck. We do of course have the Warrior Priest of the Calendar that can give you up to 5 Warrior Priests. I really do like that. I think this, this card is underrated. After all, a Warrior Priest is times 2 and I'm pretty sure one Warrior Priest Effectively gives you what two resource collection rates in reduction of aging up, and I think that basically equivalent to a two villager card with uh, more flexibility in the future with your fire fire pit. Really is a good card. I think people sleep on this card too much. Right now he is using warrior priests to build warrior priests. Uh, fifty three. Did he task? Oh, he tasks a. Uh, Oh, got the triple additional warrior priest there. So four warrior priests to build more warrior priests. Very nice. You can get number five from here as well. We do now have the autumn player bring a shipment of coin. He has looks a like fast fortress one one v one or eleven versus one one of the five. He does have access to palace intrigue there, but he's going to be more focused on the. Fortress Age stuff, Schools, Nizim, Fusiliers, Falconess, Fahi. This is going to be aggressive, perhaps military shipments in Age 3. Entering School improves hit damage to the points of Janissaries, Azaps, and Nizim Fusiliers. 
Hawkins School, make some costs less, heavy infantry. Blue School, improve the hit attack and hit points of autumn infantry. Five war priests now on the field. The nice thing about this calendar ceremony dance, if you're aging up, it does get applied to the next age up. So you don't have to feel bad of can't use it while aging up. You can. In fact, if you go from age three or age two to age three with ten warrior priests on your fire pit, by the time you get that complete, your next age up will actually be one hundred percent free. And then you could perhaps go for the messenger for that one and immediately get the age four, basically when you hit age three. You now have some more hot Travis's being pulled on out. Got some travesty here. It looks like he's playing in more defense position there for a hardened defense. If you had to take a look at his opponent's deck, you shouldn't realize eh, it's probably going to be a fast fortress deck. Speaking of which, we got the fortress being pulled on the field. The marksman, which should give him what? A handful of obus guns? So this uh, pyramid here does give a of the rations of a grave robber so i guess this thing's already been robbed there's the ration there has a bunch of local doggos and a kitty cat apparently i think it was like hyenas dingoes and coyotes are all pretty much a more or less similar animals though i think hyenas are more wolf-like when it comes to the native a9 and there goes that eagle scout he was already almost dead, but now he's pretty dead. Got some more Janissaries being pulled on the field. One shouldn't be from the Autumn player, he's saving that for this age. He could eye the Sapahi. Maybe the Falconets. Falconets are really good against Aztecs, because they can only really counter it with Coyote Runners, which are not as fast as Huzzars, or they use uh, Arrow Knights, which are pretty good at counting artillery. But that's about it. They are not, they are way too population inefficient to be used against infantry. Do not have a falcon up being deployed by the Ottoman player. We do have 10 warrior priests deployed on the field. And I don't think. Oh, he already has gotten this card, hasn't he? Going for experience, so it's getting 13 or 11 experience per second. You can increase it by 10% with this card. As much as I like this card, I find the 10% of gathering rate for the Warrior Priest is nice, but not super great. Come on, see. I never found a real good use of that card. I really wish there was maybe some other Warrior Priest cards. Maybe a Warrior Priest Temple card in Age 4 to improve the build limit of the Warrior Priests. Some of that sort, potentially. And maybe something as well as for like Eagle Scouts in Age 2. After all, the Eagle Scouts really wish they would do a bit more. They, the Aztecs do have a card to improve Scout upgrades. But it's actually, that's meant for the Native Scouts and not for the Eagle Scouts. Now I've got the Citadel being deployed on in, which he doesn't have an adequate defense for at the moment. Bring in a shipment of villagers. I also sort of wish the Aztecs uh, farm Travis is more like a general Travis, so you can get either farms or plantations to make that a little bit more flexible. Those are some minor things I would just like to see change to the Aztecs. He is starting to bring out the warriors. There's the citadel, which will have trouble versus the falconess, but the supporting army is quite small. 
He's operating the founder of research, which will give him a times three experience bounty aura for his war chief. Back to the experience trickle. Ah, build limit for the card. So he hasn't sent this. He's at the build limit, so he can't get that warrior priest there unless he deletes a warrior priest. Here comes the warriors. They do offer 20 damage like militia. And also with bonus damage. You know, actually, they could try sniping the falconet. Uh, they're not good at sniping falconets. <laughs> that damage was pathetically bad, wasn't it? They did 10 damage. Wait, did it say siege unit rather than artillery? Yeah, I can't remember. They died so quickly. Now look at the citadel now pulled in the field. Here are some Sapahi. We do have the smoking mirror. That's of course can improve its movement speed and offers a bit more dam or AoE damage. It's not really a card out actually I. The Aztec War Chief that can be incredibly healthy. Actually, when you get this card, I'll get around 2,000 health. Even then, the extra movement speed is not super useful. It doesn't really combo with most of the units in the army. Look, I've got another chance here. The War Chief's advanced way forward, gain some damage. Does take out one of those Falconets. So I suppose he's good at sniping Falconets himself. Probably charge him before, but nothing here to stop him. He's just simply lacking any sort of units. Still just getting annihilated by Sapahi's AoE damage. Warrior Priest trying to stab these guys. They have 30 hand attack, which is not half bad. But overall, he has nothing to stop the Sapahi. He has no military units really on the field. Warriors pushing forward. They do have times two versus siege units. Which Falconets are not classified as siege units, they're artillery. And those are Falconets slightly out of range of the or of the Citadel. There's some Janissaries there, War Priest gunned down. That was use a big button there to get out some Dragon Prowl. Nice. That was pretty effective versus a lot of the Ottoman units, since all the barracks units are heavy units. So the Dragon Crawl Knight is very effective versus Ottoman barracks units. That's like a Citadel there. Down nine villagers, eight are idle. Yep, I think the Aztec player is pretty much knocked out of the game. Oh wait, no, that's nine villagers on the fire pit. He has 25 villagers. Oops, got the numbers mixed up. Got a shim available for the Ottoman player. He does have a secondary town center now on the field. Obus guns are pretty decent against the Aztecs. Aztecs tend to have trouble with falconets as well as skirmishers. Obus guns are the skirmishers for the Ottoman. Dragon Prowl Knights are basically halberdiers with really good multipliers versus heavy infantry. They are the replacement for their light infantry for the Aztecs. Emrin. Got H4 here, going for the Elder. Does that improve the War Chief? What does that improve? I can't remember. No, the War Chief improves War Chief, so that I think is... Does that give Skull Knights, or does that give the Noble Huts? Guess we'll find out soon enough. He has two cards available. Go for Double Slinger. Maybe Slinger and then get enough coin for the Skull Knight Temple. This, of course, improve the movement speed of Skull Knights. I think their base movement speed is like 4. So still can't move as quickly as the War Chief, even with the... The, uh... Increased movement speed card. With the increased movement speed card. I can't think today. If does get the Noble Hut Travis's. That's two War Huts and two no uh, War Huts 
Two noble huts, two war huts here for defense, but it looks like he's having trouble redeploying or deploying in general. There we go. And they do have now, of course, increased health and damage thanks to that late deployment of that card. There goes all the warriors who do provide experience when killed, like unlike other militia. Fifty-four damage is quite nice. Thirty-six damage is decent. And full walls there. He is going for the Skull Knight Temple. He is not going for the Skull Knight deployment. That was probably a good idea to put fifteen villagers here and start going mass Skull Knight. Put five on wood for housing, five on food for our villager production. Not sure why he has this card. I could never really make this card work because you don't get attack move for your villagers. If you get attack move for your villagers, it could be actually pretty decent. But you cannot. Skull Knight's deployment field. They do have a movement speed of 4.25, which is however to your movement speed. But don't let them impact. They hit a lot, a lot harder than uh, Halberdier, especially with their charge attack of 5 AoE. That's even more explosive power than the Ottoman Bombard. So, a lot less damage. You have now the Healing Dance active there. Not bad. A brief moment of death to heal up his units. Now bring in the Knight Combat card. Very nice. He does not have the other two Knight cards from Age 3. He has another stream available. He's starting to pause some Skull Knights now. And he does have 23 units on the, on the, uh, what's it called? Uh, Plaza. Apparently the healing card does not, the healing dance does not affect the warrior priest. I did not know that. These guys are classified as military units. Actually, no, they're not. You see here, land military. But these guys are not class. Oh no, they are classified as land military, but they're not affected by that one dance. Oh. Bring some slingers. That should be a decent supplementary force for the Skull Knights. Bottom players bring in some great bomb bars. Both players now are age four. He does have triple town center of the field. He looks like he went for the times two town center card, so he's going to have soon to have four. Great village production there. The skull, uh, the autumn player may need an eye for some uh, arrow knights. He can perhaps use the big button of the noble hut to get out some more arrow knights. Got quite a bit of force here. Not a pop cap at the moment, far from it. Got the increased district there. What is this? This is assassin card. What? He is going to use some assassins to take out the war chief. That's interesting. Skull Knights are not classified as mercenary. So they will not receive bonus damage from assassins. So this is a big oversight there. Our first way forward does have now the champion slinger as well. The assassins got annihilated there, as was his body. Skull knights are closing on in, gain some massive damage. Dragon Prowl Knights can't do bonus damage versus the Alvis Ghost, but they can't do bonus damage versus the Janissaries. And we'll rip through them. I love Skull Knights. They're one of my favorite units of the game. And they have absurd, obscene torch damage. He needs to bring it the uh no, he does not have the Palace Intrigue card, so he can't get out any emergency units from here. He can perhaps bring the Militia. The Militia, the Autumn Militia can't do bonus damage, which is heavy. He just finished off this coin deposit. He does have a good number of town centers. He could eye perhaps a revolt. But what if he, can he revolt to, uh, to the 
Brazil. That can get a good amount of cheap fodder. It should combo quite well for four town centers as well. Obvious guns getting overran by the Skull Knights. Slingers are excellent units. They are basically a fast attack and speed archer. And compared to crossbows, they have what the same less base damage, same range, but twice attack speed. While also maintaining the time two versus heavy multiplier. Cancers do all go down there. This town is also being torched down. We've got a good number of villagers here. Bringing us shipment of all his guns. He actually quite a bit of resources. He may just want to revolt. He's going to run by the Slingers. Slingers are pretty cheap at 70. These villagers will get annihilated. Got now the uh, unique militia here. They do have plus 50% damage versus heavy. They'll bring in some more Skull Knights. He has revolted. He has revolted the Hungarians. Now, Grinzers are do bonus damage versus treasury, treasure units, which is, or guardians, not super important. There's a good number of them here. They do move at five, so they do move faster than Skull Knights. So they need to be micro to keep their distance. Skull Knights are not. Oh, oh yeah, times three experience aura there. So each one he kills is and or thirty experience. And they are classified as heavy, so they will receive bonus damage from the slingers. And looks like red does going back of the game. This angry saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.